Nick Mothersbaugh, and I did Laura. Uh, Sharan Goodspeed Keaton, Purgatory. My name is George Wada, and my uh, film is Once Upon a Time. Okay, so let's start with you, Nick, and if you could talk about Alora. The film is about a mother who uh, is training for a space travel um, mission and has to decide between her love of her daughter and doing the dream that she's always, you know, wanted to do, which is space travel. Um, and the idea was originated from uh, NASA and H the Houston Film Society uh, partner up every year and do a film competition. And so we wrote the film for that competition and then submitted it. We, we missed it the first year, actually. We didn't get the deal. I mean, we, we found out about it like two weeks in advance before the festival deadline. And um, I didn't make it that that point, but then took a year off and then came back to it about a month later and finished it up and submitted it again. Didn't make that, but ever since then it's been getting quite a few film festivals and luckily, luckily enough this one as well and um, it's been doing really well. Uh, my name is Sharan Goodspeed Keaton and uh, Purgatory, my role with Purgatory was producer. Um, I um, and my producing partner Charles W. Bush, we uh, assist indie filmmakers in DFW and abroad with um, producing their film on limited budget. So that was our role with this film. I was personally responsible for location scouting as well as craft services. And so um, that was how I helped uh, this dream become a reality. Purgatory is a short film about the title, Purgatory. Um, everyone kind of has their theory on what happens when you die. Do you go straight up or straight down? And this um, kind of examines it from one religious standpoint, but in a very non-traditionally religious way. Um, I don't want to give too much of it away, but it's a really short film, you don't want to give too much away. But, um, <laughs> I know. It's like if you say anything, people go, "I don't need to see it." I heard it all. Um, a mother's uh, a mother's son and and husband are killed in a car accident, and then she does something which causes her to end up in purgatory. Oh, okay. 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 Short. Okay. Once upon a time, and once upon a time, I was a little boy growing up on a farm outside of Fresno, California. This would have been. My recollection goes back to the 1950s, and definitely I remember a lot of the 60s and beyond. Uh, last year, uh, thank you for the frame for frame for uh, letting me show talking that mumble jumbo, and that was uh, Donald Trump uh, going into the election, and then I uh, updated that to uh, make it more current. What you see in my film, I take from another uh, movie, but I remember those. Uh, where these white folks live. Actually, my folks, I can remember the farm we grew up in. It's no different than uh, these uh, little Okies or uh, Sugar Hill or what, uh, you, know, you know, Tortilla Flats. I mean, we all had those. Um, and here we are, this is America. We're one big country, a very, very diverse country. And just to uh, start demeaning uh, people of color or religion or economic or whatever. Come on, that's not the American thing. So I'm gonna say, Frank for Frank, thank you for having me, and letting me tell my story and share my experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, George. So what does it mean to you to be in this festival and to be be taking your, your film to other festivals, Nick? Uh, lucky, I mean, to get people to see it. I mean, you, you can put it online and throw it out there in some way and whatever it's kind of a guaranteed way that people show up and, and see your film so yeah. I just feel lucky to have it in in any film or any uh, film festival at this point but um, I don't know it's just it's something different than you know throw, throwing it online you get to be there and, and see people's reactions and how they take the film and then you can talk to them later and you know, they either come up and they're like, wow, that's really great, or I understand this, or whatever. So it's, it's always fun. I think it brings people together in, in, a, in a different way, and you get to talk about it in a different way. It's, it's just a, it's a good time. So. She ran? What, what, same question for you. I kind of mirror his sentiment. I, we're very grateful to be a part of this, and so uh, thank you, also mirroring his sentiment. 
uh, to frame for frame because uh, when you're an independent filmmaker, you never know if it's going to end up just on a flash drive in your collection or if it's going to actually be seen uh, in a public arena. Um, our writer, director, executive producer, Malcolm X Johnson, is a very um, edgy, very uh, on the edge kind of a writer and producer. He takes topics that all people think about, but no one sometimes says it out loud, or they don't say it out loud in that way. And he puts it on the screen kind of in a very in-your-face fashion. And it's something that people need to be able to see because just like with negative thoughts like he spoke of, that someone can give you permission to have his films give you permission to have conversations about things that may be taboo or maybe, you know, people talk about it at home but not out in public. What does happen when we die? Where do we go? What things do you pay for? You know what I'm saying? So um, this is very important. Like I said, shout out to our writer, director, executive producer, Malcolm X Johnson. Um, for producing such a provocative piece and to frame for frame for allowing such a diverse group of provocative pieces to be presented. <laughs> it's really, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. yeah. George, do you have anything to add? Uh, on uh, James's uh, talk back as to uh, the size of frame for frame, that's my favorite part. Not only is it in Arlington, well, <clears throat> Arlington, that's basically the entire Metroplex. And you have to go to a really big uh, film festival like DIFF. And then, yes, you know what? You're going to get lost. And I've been to one film festival, is huge, uh, multiple locations, and having to drive to where your screening's going to be and making sure that people get there. And then I realized, oh my goodness, it's a cool venue, but you got to pay for parking. Uh, that type of stuff. So, <laughs> in that case, Frame for Frame is it's, it's a no-brainer. And if uh, anybody's a filmmaker uh, in Texas, especially North Texas, you got to just put it, uh, submit. You know, it's just submit, you're supporting a great cause. Yeah. And if you get selected, you definitely have an audience that's watching your uh, film. I only get that in very small film festivals. So I'm targeting small ones and if I have something that, an indie, if I work on an indie that has a big budget, yes, then I'll think about uh, Toronto or South by Southwest. But in the meantime, it's also it's difficult enough to get into small ones. And once you get into a small one like Frank for Frank, filmmakers, uh, it's a different type of experience. Gotta say, you're making me excited to go now. It's the first time I've been to it or, or been, in, or been in, <laughs> in for it. So it's it's, 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 it's good. good. It's really good. Uh, it's good. Been to uh, Los Angeles and New Jersey, yes. And, uh, you got the prestige and everything. And then you're looking at the times and everything. So, and I even get decent times. But now you're competing in four different venues, maybe even up to six. And how are people going to be able to find your film now? Right. It's almost like, uh, might as well put it up on Vimeo, <laughs> uh, social media, try to find you there. It's also cool, uh, the location, because yeah. as I've shared on my social media and told people, it's a studio movie girl, people went, oh my gosh, your movie is a studio movie girl? And then I kind of went, well, you know, yeah. <laughs> 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 it made me feel like, oh. Me too. <laughs> extra proud because like you you know some of our other films have shown in other places and you know yay but this is home and as most artists as most filmmakers as most producers know you are least appreciated at home you are least appreciated at home you can take your music your writing your work your films all over the country and pre people celebrate you and you go to these radio stations and they go all the way from Fort Worth, Texas and they're excited and you live in your city and people won't give you love for what you do or respect what you do. So the fact that we're able to do what we do in Arlington at home in front of our families and say, hey, come out to Studio Movie Grill, that is a very cool thing to me. So I'm, I'm with you on that. Yeah. So it's fourth year and that, uh... You see that they have the publicist now for the music festival part. The city of Arlington, I live in Arlington, they're investing a lot uh, for their image, uh, making it into a destination city. And James Hawthorne is an extremely integral part of bringing the culture 
bringing up the culture of Arlington. And I am really excited to uh, show my film because we have same experiences, but our beliefs in, uh, how can I say this, social values and that type, are you gonna be the person that says, yeah, we'll build the wall, keep them out of here, they're all gangsters, they're all criminals. Or are we gonna say, hey, these people need help, what can we do to help them? And as filmmakers, we can uh, make that happen. Game soccer is making it a bit, uh, making that happen for me that I get to share my message. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so we're just be talking with, about the importance of festivals like Frank for Frank, regional film festivals. It's not always all about the tip of the Sundance at International Film Festival. It's really the regional film festivals that really make things happen for you guys. Yes. And so filmmakers use their film scene, but also to purchase through distributors and show them on you know, streaming services. Talk a little bit about the importance of yeah, the digital content. Very much. Well, I'm fine with that time. Um, <clears throat> no, I think it's it's incredibly important, um, and it, it gives a voice to people who otherwise could be could go along voiceless or um, not having the same um, not options, but um, opportunities. Yeah, thank you. Same opportunities that other other folks have with greater connections or more money, so on and so forth. So I think. It's very important for for smaller festivals like these to to keep keep going and, and giving people a voice and a, a, a platform nonetheless, be it small, but still a way to show people who they are, what they're thinking, what their thoughts are, so on and so forth, and get people rallied behind that kind of stuff. It's, it's great. I feel like a kid at school. He stole my <laughs> answer. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, ditto what he said, um, and kind of just what I already said, how important it is to be able to um, produce things regionally within your own city, within your own state, within your home, own hometown, um, and uh, just how important it is for uh, the people in your area to rally behind what you're doing. Um, distribution is so important a lot of uh, young filmmakers and indie filmmakers don't even think about uh, that type of stuff they don't even think about the importance of you know distribution or what's going to happen with my film next they just know that they have a story to tell and they want to tell it so then once it's told it's like what do we do next so um, again very grateful I feel like we've all, all been so grateful we're so grateful um, to uh, James Hawthorne and Frame for Frame for providing a platform for that next step um, for us to meet each other because you're always, you know, two steps away from someone else who might be your next business partner or might be your next opportunity. Um, so that's always a good thing. So um, I think just kind of grateful is the key word today that's going around. And not only, not only showing, but but then networking, like you were saying, with yeah. other filmmakers and other, and obviously distributors and so on and so forth. So. Right, versus being in something in California yeah. where you're meeting people from all over the country that you may not be able to afford to or ever see again. You're networking with people within your own region, within your own communities. Um, and I listened, just me being observant, uh, the stories that are sitting here all happen to be about or by or for again, people who wouldn't normally have a strong voice in America. Um, a female astronaut, that seems common now. She's like, oh, females, we do everything. No, we don't. <laughs> we still have to fight way harder for things. So a story about a female astronaut or, you know, um, a, a, a female uh, lead in a role or a female black producer or a Hispanic family or a family that's fighting with, you know, being deported or whatever, like all of these stories are stories that are fortunate enough to be given a platform here. So, um, tag you it. I just have to say, uh, Frame for Frame uh, there might be regional, but there's people, uh, film submissions from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And there, there's also a competition for it, and not all people here in North Texas go home with prizes. I've seen it go to, uh, Sometimes people that have uh, so far away they don't attend, but they win because the film's so good. So, and that's what uh, I guess that's 
that tugs at my heart says, how cool is that, that there are people from all over the world, and studio, uh, the, the venue, it's not like uh, hospitality, uh, hospitality uh, lounge in a tent uh, outside the parking lot where filmmakers do lounge. I mean, uh, studio and movie grill, it's a really great uh, venue, nice bar, uh, nice uh, lounge area. It's a great place to uh, connect. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, do you all know your time so when you're playing? Yes. Okay. Four, ten. Four, ten. Four, ten. Okay. <laughs> uh, Saturday? Saturday. Uh, Saturday. <laughs> so, and you're up, you're up on Friday? Friday, Friday night, night at 7 p.m., just, just before Cooley High. Ooh. Yeah. Do you know when you're playing? Yes, uh, four, ten, Saturday. Okay, awesome. Great. Do y'all have anything else that you would like to mention <coughs> that we haven't mentioned yet? Or where your film is going next? Uh, next, Allura is, is going over to LA. Um, we just uh, got accepted to a film festival out there. I think it's called Sci Fi and Screenplay Film Festival of some sort. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, <laughs> it's a big one. Yeah, it's a long, long name. But, and I have a terrible memory. So, um, <laughs> But yeah, so we're really excited about that. We're thinking about going out that way. Um, I mean, I think it's a great place to have. I mean, it's the motherland of film, yeah. so it's a good place to have yeah. a small film. In it, so yeah. we're excited about that. Uh, I feel terrible that I don't know the answer to this about where our film is going next. I know we haven't been to any of these, so it's going to be one of these. Okay. Either the Sands Film Festival or Transparent Film Festival or Aphrodite Film Awards. Not really sure which. Okay. Um, but one of those. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. And I'm really super thankful for that. Thank you. Um, and again, just like to shout out to. Uh, the main people who aren't here, and I'm here sitting in their steed, which is producer Charles W. Bush, my partner in crime, and our writer, executive producer, uh, and director, uh, Malcolm X. Johnson. So I'm very thankful to be sitting here in the place and uh, being able to speak on behalf of Purgatory. Um, come check it out um, on Friday at Studio Movie Girl. I'm doing my own little commercial here. Friday. <laughs> Friday, September 20th at Studio Movie Grill in Arlington, just before Cooley High. Tickets are online at Eventbrite. $20 for the day. Uh, I submitted this uh, once upon a time to a few film festivals. When it, the very first one I submitted to was Frame for Frame, and I'm still editing. I don't like uh, how it was put together, the talking points that introduced the movie, I said, it's still not right. And then all of a sudden, I said, congratulations, you've been accepted. I just did that as a placeholder. I said, holy smokes, now I've got a really <laughs> um, yes. So, so where's this going? Um, a, there's a few big local film festivals that I'm going to uh, check out and see if they'll accept it. Uh, Fort Worth uh, Indie Showcase, Film Showcase is one of them. But it's, that one's huge. This one's smaller. And I do like small film festivals. Uh, another one that I submitted to is uh, Wimberley, Texas. Out, it's out in the hill country uh, between Austin and San Marcos. Went there last year for the first time and it was just blown away. Probably had the biggest uh, audience of any of my films there because the town's so small and ev practically everybody showed up for this. <laughs> awesome. Anything else that y'all want to cover and ask about? We good? Is there, uh, what do you want people to come away from seeing? Start over. I, I got one. I got one. Uh, <laughs> 2020 is election year. There is a choice. Hopefully the Republicans have the guts enough to field somebody to take on a challenger. But again, 2020 is election year. Let's make a change. And what? Yeah, just make just make a change because I'm sure everybody understands what the message is all about. Uh, I think if we wanted anyone to take away a message from our film, uh, it would be to really examine uh, your own personal thoughts on life and the afterlife, um, form your own opinion, um, be sound in your own beliefs, and don't let anybody shake you on that. 
Um, we're not asking anybody to walk away believing what we believe. As a matter of fact, after you watch the film, we never would really truly say what the filmmaker believes, but just to start conversation, talk to your family, talk to your kids, that's the thing, you know? Um, so even if it's not specifically about life after death, just the fact that art is supposed to invoke conversation. Art, art is supposed to make people walk away having differences of opinion and being okay to express that, right, without feeling like you're gonna be bashed your head about it. So I want people to walk away from purgatory talking. So you don't want them fighting like Star Wars fans? Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, my is to, um, I want you to walk away thinking about how you value relationships that you have. Because my, my, our film is, I keep looking out the camera, my producer, our film is very much about the relationships um, that you have in life and, and how love and ideas and um, goals and aspirations can transcend space and time. So I think, I think uh, just, I, I, we wrote it from a place um, because I, I live away from my family, they're back in Nebraska. Um, and so it's it's kind of like a love letter to my family in a little way, but also um, um, I don't know. Just I, I, I think. But we're um, two at least a few relationships in my family, so I think just valuing who's in your life and why, and, and I think it's just very important. Hold on to our relationships throughout life. So. Awesome.